what's going on guys welcome back to the channel it's this is William Bootsy Blandon entrepreneur uh, youtuber influencer self-proclaimed corporate hustler um, I don't like this angle because I look fat but we're gonna go with it um, everything's going good still for those of you that have been following, I'm in a good position right now. Honestly, um, I just can't 100% focus. I'll be honest with you guys because I'm about to be a grandfather. I've told you in past videos, like literally any time now, between now and next possible two weeks. So I'm trying to stay focused on what we're doing with the business. But it's a good feeling to know that I have funds in the bank. I'm not bragging. I'm just being honest. Um, thanks to the SBA funding, it's a good feeling to know I have money in the bank where I really don't have to stress out. I'm not going to lie to y'all. It's a good feeling. I can get up every day not stressed out anymore for now. You know, I'll be stressed out again if I don't make some moves with the business then but we're going to get into that in a minute but i'm really calm because i have some reserves now even though there's debt on my reserves there's debt because i got one eidl loan and i got a couple grants so you can look at it about half of it that i got liquid cash we'll consider half of it grant half of the loan so some debt on it um, I'm not bragging. I'm just giving you rough numbers. I still got about 40k liquid cash in my personal account. And yes, it's probably the most money I've had in my entire life. I'll keep it real with y'all. Because if you watch my channel, you saw I was poor. I was struggling. 40k in my personal account. This is actually... The most cash I've had, um, yeah, my entire life. Cash in my personal, the only time. And it's some debt on it, but um, the new guidelines actually give us two full years at the lowest interest rate to pay this money back. So it's safe to say that this pandemic has actually saved me in a lot of ways because this is funds i wouldn't have got it my score was too low guys i had tanked my score from previous business not like i said i haven't made mistakes i made some mistakes this is my comeback so i had corporate credit and everything screwed up and now this is my comeback so some of that bullshit that rich wayne be saying that you can keep doing this even if you make a mistake is right you can actually make a mistake. I'm not suggesting you try to make a mistake. I wasn't trying to make a mistake. It's just a lot of things happened. My grandmother died. There was, you know, there was some volatility going on in my life with my personal family. But we are on a path to possibly get rich this time around. For the first time in my life, I might actually be the person to build a legacy for my family. Thanks through SBA funding, thanks to a pandemic, because I was an Uber driver in 2019. I was grinding, guys. I ain't gonna lie. I, I'm, I was grinding, because that was the one thing. It wasn't like work in retail. It wasn't as bad as work, because I enjoyed doing it. Like, it, maybe I, out of a month, I might get one bad day. Most of the people were friendly. I had great conversations. It changed me in a lot of ways because I was an introvert. Anybody that knows me, comment below if you personally know me. Like, I was the most shy dude on this planet. On this entire planet, I was the shyest dude. Being an Uber driver forced me to communicate and talk to people, and I actually enjoyed it. 
you know, towards the end, it was my fault to get out of it, actually, because I was so high towards the end, guys. I'm going to keep it real with you. I was smoking so much weed during the day. I was like, yeah, I can't even do it, you know. But that even worked out because I ended my Uber career in 2020, like in the middle of the year. So the, the, the SBA want to see a decline in sales to get this government funded. So I, I ain't gonna lie, it kind of worked out perfectly that the decline in my Uber profits. And then I really filed my taxes as an Uber driver. I was smart to do that. A lot of you guys don't claim taxes on your Uber stuff at all. I claimed taxes, got so many write-offs that it, it wiped out what I would have owed. You know? Thanks to my shady uh, Liberty Tax guy. And I we didn't really do anything illegal. It's just that you know how you fudge the numbers a little bit with how much you've used on gas. And, you know, if you want to say shady because he, you know, tweaked the numbers a little bit. But there really was write-offs, obviously, being an Uber driver. You're spending a lot on gas, um, little things here and there. and then the, But I ended in this pandemic in 2020. Been grinding ever since, y'all. I stayed stuck up in my room and created a holding company course. Granted, some of you might not say it's that great, but it's really just to get you on the phone. It's really just a product design to get you guys on the phone with me. And I apologize for um, one or two of you that will buy the holding company course. Number one, stop giving fake emails. Put your number in. When you purchase the course, put your number in. And then I could call you back because a lot of you can't like, once you buy the course, you're like, yo, you never called me. I don't have your number. You got to email me your number. Will Blanding at Gmail. Blanding spelled B-L-A-N-D-I-N-G. At Gmail. And um, give me your number. Best time to call you. And I'll call you. Now back to what we were saying. Yes, yeah, so I was able to pull all this off. With only reporting the Uber stuff. And I really filed my taxes for 18 and 19 for the Uber stuff. So now I have a situation now where I could go back to Uber and actually bring on a driver. I could literally go hire somebody because I'm in a position about to get a car. Have them drive my car and just do Uber and Lyft. Which, for me to do that, is gonna, I'm gonna have to qualify the driver. Like, you're gonna have to be like the best freaking driver, you know, to be taking my ride. You know what I mean? But I'm just giving you examples of how you can create a real business for yourself. Now, if you are driving for Uber, Lyft, DoorDash, Postmates, any of those gig economy jobs, keep doing it. But set up a LLC. Don't go corp like me because it's a little bit more expensive. Just set up a basic LLC. You know, if you need help with that, contact me. Get the course and then I'll get on the phone with you and we'll help talk for a whole hour. The links are below for the course. We'll talk for a whole hour. But our strategy, whatever you want to talk about. You set up an LLC. Guys, this is really powerful. Set up an LLC. Put all your Uber, have your Uber and Lyft money go right to your LLC. Don't have it go to one of your debit cards or none of that. Have it go to your LLC. Trust me, you're going to have enough write-offs where you don't have to owe tax unless you want to show you owe tax. By doing that, you're able to start building corporate credit just on that activity. Banks just want to see cash going in the bank. Uh, I'll give you an example. I probably made about $34,000 on just Uber, guys. I was doing Uber and Lyft. But on just Uber, I made about $34,000. But I didn't have it going through an LLC. This is what I'm trying to tell you guys to do it. Had I had that done, I would have already qualified so much corporate credit. I could have done so much down the line. 
but we're learning now and I'm trying to give you guys the game. By that one little activity, now you can go to banks and get corporate credit approved from a regular bank because they see activity going through that account. Guys, it's really that simple. It's really that simple. You and your wife, you and your girlfriend, start doing gig jobs, have that money going to one LLC, and I guarantee you, in a year's time, you'll be able to qualify for a large amount of corporate credit that you can go buy a house or expand your business. Go start a fleet over business and have other people under you. And I admit, I'm learning this stuff late in life. And I'm telling you guys, because I know some of you guys are in your 20s and 30s are going to be watching this. Start as soon as possible. I didn't have this gig shit when I was your age. We didn't have gig economy when I was in my 20s. I'm thinking, God, I may, I'm living in an opportunity where we can have this stuff. Where I'm still young enough to appreciate it. You know, I'm middle age. I know you see the grades, you know, and technically middle age is between 45 and 55 years old. I'm 50. So technically I'm middle age, but I'm sure to a lot of young people I'm talking to, I'm an old head. Start this stuff now with just gig jobs. Put it in an LLC. Qualify for a loan. Now you can go buy a, a investment property. It's simple now. It seems crazy because I had a brick and mortar store, but I didn't know this stuff. I had the actual LLC guys, but I wasn't actually putting any money through. I was just putting money in my pocket. Mistake number one. Had I just had the money going through the bank, I would have qualified for stuff. I didn't know about personal credit. I didn't know about business credit. I knew, but I didn't really know how to go about getting it or starting it you know but now with this pandemic I know I got off track I started talking about the pandemic but you actually I'll, I probably qualify for all this money I think my credit score was like a 570 so because it was a pandemic the government allow your credit score to even be low to qualify for this money. I qualify as a sole proprietor under my own personal name doing Uber and Lyft. And I, didn't, I didn't even report Lyft, guys. I'm being totally honest with you. So, I just reported my Uber earnings because I was trying to write off some stuff. But had I added in Lyft, oh my God, I would have qualified for even more than I already received. All this government funding was just based on my Uber earnings. I didn't even include the Lyft. The Lyft, I didn't make as much. I probably made another, I'll be honest, I probably made another 20000 in, tw in that year. Probably an extra ten to 20000 just on the Lyft. You know, in total... Uh, let's see, 71, 80, 85, 90. I've, I've, in a total, I've almost received 100K from the SBA during this pandemic. And I'm, I put in another video that I'm kind of breaking the guidelines because they don't want you to expand your business. With this money they just want you to keep it in the same business which i'm kind of doing but i'm kind of not like right now the last loan increase i'm letting that sit in my sole proprietor account but because it's a sole proprietor that's also my payroll so i could kind of do what i want with the money you could argue because it's my payroll so i spend it out and just put some of my personal navy federal which happens to be the same bank holding my holding company account. 
So for my personal and native federal, I can just move money to my business account. And my holding company is actually, I'm actually on payroll now. It's actually paying me a physical check, guys. I'm legit. I'm legit, finally. I'm getting my own paycheck from my own business. First time in history. That's got to mean that I'm on the right path with this stuff. That's got to mean I'm on the right path. You know, I'm legit. I got a legal business. And they like to see inks over LLCs with corporate credit. I don't know why that is. It's just maybe because old school. You know, you're still going to build a, a pretty much the same amount of corporate credit. But the underwritings, they like to see a traditional corporate C corporations over LLCs. If it's a C or S, but the traditional I and C at the end, they just like to see that. You know, but you're able to actually leverage yourself better, I think, with a C Corp. But a lot of people are afraid of C Corp because they, you know, scared you with the double taxation. But if you're using it for for the purposes of building corporate credit, I think it's a little bit more powerful. In my opinion. That's why my guy um, Houston McMillan he got his own YouTube channel. He just pushes C corps over LLCs, and even my landlord was like, "How could you be a single member corporation? People don't even know you could be a single member corporation because regular accountants tell you if it's just you, you have to do an LLC. It's not true. Essentially, what I've done is built my own shelf corp. You can kind of say." And kind of was putting money in it, you know, made, you know, having stuff go through it so it's actually a real business. Like my holding company, course money goes in it. All my Z-Tegrity money goes in it. So I'm stimulating it and then I put my own cash in it. So for a year, you know, it's been one year now. It looked like it's been a, a, a shell corp that's actually got some business flowing through it. So I don't need to have to go out and buy a shelf court. I've already created my own. And I've had money going through it. And stem now I'm doing some corporate credit stuff with it. I signed up with NAV.com. So now it's reporting to DNB. So I'm actually stimulating my own corporation. To where I can start doing some real business stuff. Like going after commercial property. You know, but I'm I'm doing everything very slowly. A lot of younger people that watch this channel, they wanted things moving like that. They they would just pull out a lot of that cash and spent it already. I know you would have, because in the past that's how my mind used to work. But you got to think, the SBA is kind of looking at how you spend this money, so I'm taking small amounts out, very small. You know, so. Because if you start pulling out large amounts out, it, 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 the banks start getting iffy too. So the strategy is do this stuff like legit people do. Don't go crazy. Like a lot of you would have pulled out 10 G's. As soon as you got 40 in the bank, pulled out 10 G's and would have spent it on some car or something. No. Make everything look like you would normally do if you didn't have a lot of money. So I'm actually going to finance a car, you know, eventually buy the rest of my cars under my new LLC that I'm forming that's going to eventually turn into my escort. That's where I'm going to brand myself. Brand, brand myself everywhere, all over social media, um, brand another channel. So that's what I'm working on now. But if it wasn't for my grandchild so surely coming soon, I think I'd be able to focus a little bit better on um, moving. I'm trying to move to just a nicer place. Hopefully where the rent is a little cheaper. And um, I got to get a car. 
you know, I'm trying to wait for the score to move a little bit before I pull the trigger. Because everything's strategic now. Like, I can't even say the words, but you know what I mean. I'm trying to get things where I do them in a certain order. You know, you don't want to get crazy and start spending money too fast. Um, right now, I'm thinking, should I pull the trigger on Navy Federal on the personal side? And I'm thinking of doing that. Getting up, go through the pre-approval, see what cars are qualified for. And then I'm trying to decide if I should go with this other corp, uh, this um, company that fixes your credit. But then they offer you trade lines and stuff later. I don't want to say the name just in case I promote them later. Uh, so I got a lot going on, you know. But I'm out here, I'm grinding. Um continue hustling get my course we get on a t phone talk about strategy but when you get the course get the course and then email me we'll do that because a lot of you i can't get a hold of you why are you so hard to get a hold of i'm sorry i can't just you know what i'm saying i am doing stuff i got a life y'all just act like i just sit around and wait for y'all to call me yeah 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 i got a life relax get the course and then go to my email, email me, Will, I just got the course. Don't be trying to fraud me if you didn't, because I'm going to check. I'm going to check the portal if I can see your name. And then some of you get the course and don't leave me your no number, and then it's a fake email. Y'all scared I'm going to email you. Oh, Will's going to email me. Come on, guys. Just help me out a little bit. Get the course. The link's below. If you want to know what website to go to, it's williamblanding.com. It's just that simple, williamblanding.com. It's an intro video on there. Um, it goes into what I suspect a good holding company will cost to set up with the lawyers. But we can negotiate that down, you know. We got some other methods we could do it for much less. So, uh, the holding company course, is, it really just goes into the steps that I would take to start a corporation or foundation or to um, get a provider service to set stuff up for you because you don't know about the stuff. I got you old heads too. You're old head like me. There's companies you can go to. You're going to have to spend some money. So you're going to have to spend a couple grand to get everything set up 100% legal where you can sleep at night. But I also got your young hustlers too. You young hustlers, I know y'all really know, y'all risk takers. So if you're risk takers, you can get stuff way cheaper. I'm talking uh, maybe $1,000 you can do everything, including put money in the the account to get it going you know but that's your young thunders you don't do stuff right sometimes you know so get the course we'll get on the phone we'll talk strategy and then we'll figure out where to go from there but my mind is if you don't have cash just come with the credit I don't care where you get it from your girlfriend some girl you're just sleeping with just come with the credit don't come with nothing and then we can't make nothing happen. That's all I'm saying. But subscribe if you haven't already. If you want to see more content like this. And we're going to keep this going. I'll catch you guys in the next one.